Let's talk about writers. Writers, yeah. Because when you created, when you worked yep. on a collective, yep. say, like the farm show, the uh -huh. actors yep. became a resource, yep. which mm -hmm. then, yep. and the words were made. Yeah. But then you work with uh, Linda Griffiths, say. Yeah. Uh -huh. And there's writing involved. It, she became a writer. How do you dramaturge someone who's writing their own work? Well, in the well, the, it depends where you are in the process. And keep your sense uh -huh. of rule and keep your sense of anarchy rolling, right? Well, unless okay, you're well, out there, the, it's not. In the in the initial one, uh, in the initial one, uh, there was no problem because it was just a theme. And uh, you know, I, I the interesting point is that theater. I still think that theater dictates what stays in the show and what doesn't. Now, other people who've gone through the process with me say that I can be very stubborn and, you know, all the, in the difficult this way, that way, or the other thing. And if I need something in there, it'll When you be say in. theater dictates, you mean the theater, the, no, no, the actual dynamics of the, when you're improvising this stuff, you can find, you know what's working and what isn't. And, and actually, the early collective, the first time we did the farm show, and, you know, in the earlier collectives, uh, before that, there was about, well, there was Dukabors. Um, and it never got written out, uh, per se. It certainly didn't get written. Somebody wrote it out later, but it was just a, a, a sketch of what was there before. Um, the actors had to, find it, had to find a newness in what they were doing. They couldn't bring pieces of paper in and memorize or stuff like that. It had to be immediate and real. If it wasn't, mm -hmm. and if it didn't cook, we'd say, okay, that's not in anymore. We have to find something else. It's not cooking. It's not happening. And so I got attracted to a theater that was, you know, was guided, well, was driven by the discoveries and the immediacy of things that were happening on stage. And so that is, therefore, that's a form in a collective, of dramaturgy. Linda comes in and Linda, you know, comes in and she starts jamming. We, we, we've got a theme. She jams on this thing. There'll be a scene. I said, well, that was okay, but not, you know, but there'll be a scene that both of us say, oh, you know, say, uh, yeah, say Trudeau's, uh, you know, I was, I was kind of fascinated by uh, a Nancy Mitford book at the time called uh, Voltaire in Love or something like that. And we had this wonderful idea that Trudeau, you know, who's this intellectual, does this absurd thing of falling in love with somebody that doesn't make any sense, his rational mind, so we have a debate between his rational mind or whatever. So we have to come up with a, a sequence for it. So she jams the scene where the guys get together, Trudeau and Henry. And he gets a guy-to-guy -guy thing. He goes, oh, it starts cooking. And he starts to say, oh, oh, wow, this is gold. This has to be in the play. What you're doing here, like the, the, you know, the things that you're buzzing on, okay, now that line might not need to be there, this might not, but this is it, this is gold. And uh, what was, you know, really fascinating, I don't know how actors do this, but what was really good about that was that she, well, I, I think I do know actors always hang on to their best stuff. I can see, you know, I can see in you stuff that I remember from, you know, a 1973 show, at, or 75 show at uh, Free Theater or something like that. You know, I can, I can see elements that will show up in another show because, and it's mm -hmm. not that you do it, I think it's your DNA almost that does it, or your body memory or something like that. Yes, yeah, the way your gasoline burns. It just <laughs> does. Look at Fox. Yeah, yeah. Look at David Fox. Yeah. The way he burns. It burns. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. when that goes out, it's over. Yeah because that's what we go to see David for. Yeah. But let's go back to words again, because yeah. you're, ta you're, talking about a kind of okay, well, you're talking yeah. about a kind of dramaturgy, right? Mm -hmm. Of what works in the theater. Yeah. And then there's the other kinds of dramaturgy that look at plot, that look yeah, at structure, yeah, yeah, that yeah, look yeah, at yeah, scene, yeah. that mm -hmm. look at introduction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is, neither is better or worse, but no, they're quite they're different just ways different. Yeah, to they're the... Yeah, they're very, very different, yeah. Um, I don't know. I, you know, there are legitimate... Um, arguments about the limitations of collectives. Yeah, I, I initially I thought that uh, collectives would be replaced by writers, but m what ha seemed to happen was that writers um, ended up going into specialty territory instead of dreaming big a lot of the time. What do you mean? 
Well, it seemed a lot of the writers coming along seemed to need to make a career as writers as opposed to um, f finding, you know, huge themes that the culture needed to talk about. And, you know, we still have not the great prospector play. Like, you know, we, 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 it's a huge theme in Canada. You know, we got Harry Oaks, we got all this stuff. I went up into northern Ontario and I did a play about the north and, 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 and what guided the people who wanted to live up there. Uh, but, and that was, you know, a great idea and an interesting experience for everybody who did it, but it wasn't the prospector play. There's still a huge play about the ambition, the dreams, the toughness of the north, all of those things that hasn't happened, you know. There's a great play written by Herschel Hardin called The Great Wave of Civilization that I banged my head on directing at, you know, the worst place in the world uh, for that kind of thing. Where? Um, the, Lennoxville. <laughs> yeah. I took, you know, I took uh, in, you know, in my crazy arrogance at the time and drunk on the hits of Farm Show 1837 and stuff like that, they wanted the Farm Show and I said, no, why don't we do this great play called The Great Wave of Civilization and they went with it. But, you know, there wasn't a native person within 2,000 miles so we had to, you know, I called Lennoxville the kind of Rhodesia of Quebec and <laughs> And Lennoxville, we should point out, is, is a, is a is festival a love, of it was new a festival, Canadian new work, Canadian English work Canadian in work. English, in a you know place where there was a well, there was a little enclave of English at a university there, and, and then university they were surrounded by uh, Quebecois, right. who you know had and like a little Rudy, curious. They have uh, <laughs> <Yes>. gone. <laughs> in any case, um, I you know I talked um, Gordon Tatusis into coming out and being the central guy who had a part as big as Hamlet. And, uh, you know, we tried to do the show, and it was, it was a valiant experiment. But, you know, poor Gordon was left kind of hung out to dry a bit in terms of, you know, enough surround and a potential native audience that would help feed him in terms of what to happen. It should have been in Saskatoon, which is, you know, where we did later shows on native themes. So are you 